All right, now, without further ado, let's continue on with our month recap series. Now, continuing with mindset number 21, learn of things not to say. Your subconscious and your conscious are linked. Your word said consciously is heard by your ears and is ingrained subconsciously. It influences your emotions, your actions, and your intuition. Have some self-respect for what you say, because if you break a promise, you're gonna lose a bit of trust in yourself. And you know what? It comes into having a bit of pride and ego and honor, but control it in a healthy manner. The law of manifestation, you know, that your actions, your words, your behavior, your thoughts, they are all part of this full, you know, full circle cycle that will ultimately create your outcome, removing external factors such as luck. And so how do you use it? Well, let's take an example of, you know, you wanting to be rich. If you want to be rich, speak it. Stop saying limiting and daunting phrases like, I can't afford this, or it's too much, and learn instead to ask an open question. How can I afford this? Or an affirmation, whether true or not, that I can afford this. Changing yourself is hard, but with this, you will learn to be careful with your words, to speak with conviction and intention. You will learn to become and embody the language of who you want to be. Now, next mindset. Mindset number 22 humbling yourself especially when you win learn to humble yourself complacency and getting comfortable is the worst thing to ever happen and is literally your one shot ticket back down to where you started you know whether you're an atheist or a christian i don't care i've been in both have something bigger than you that will humble you whether it be the reality of life or god I've been on both sides of the coin and I'm thankful to be able to tap into the both rational and spiritual aspects of my life. Mindset number 23. Stop caring about other people's opinions. There is this thing called the spotlight effect. It's a mental phenomenon where people are so self-centered in themselves and think that everyone else around them is looking at them all the time. You believe you're the center of the attention. But let me tell you something, you may have not also realized that with this effect, you ignore the actions of others. And the truth is you forget and are too worried about yourself to care. And because most people are usually put in the same effect as well due to social media and just the way modern society works with our technologies, they do the exact same thing to you, they ignore you. I see so many people put themselves in the spotlight effect and it develops this level of social anxiety in which your actions is dictated by what you think other people think if they were always looking at you. The truth is no one's really looking at you. Everyone is yet again too focused on themselves. Even if someone judges you, so what? Is their opinion on you the end of the world? I mean, to me, for someone to care about what I'm doing rather than what they're doing, I honestly pity that because I feel like you have nothing better to do you know, in your life, then gossip, talk about other people and judge other people rather than add value to your own life. And I think I've said this before, but you are on a big f***ing rock covered by water, animals and cities with 8 billion other people that you don't even know the names of. And you're concerned about the opinions of a very small substrata of people in the area you work, study and live in over your own. It sounds harsh, but at the end of the day, understand everyone will die. And when you die, you know, people might care for a week, your family might care for a week, but at the end of the day, people have to f move on. When people as animals have a tendency over time to forget things, why does it matter what the f you do? That's why I'm not afraid to face failure and make the most out of the life I've been given. Because when I die, most people will forget me and move on. So why not at least make it memorable for me? You know, I'm not a big legacy guy, but just understand like you have one life yet again. You know, don't waste your energy, don't waste your time, don't waste your, don't waste your, don't waste your peace worrying about what other people will do. When I was still at school before the end of the year break, I mass emailed my entire 11 year level and my entire year 12 level of an email talking about the education system, you know, and then linking it to Iman's, Iman's was currently airing um series on on the rescue i got so much hate for it i got so many looks for it but you know what? honestly i i don't care 
I, I genuinely don't. And it's passed. And the next day, 90% of people forgot. And everyone moved on. That was that. Now, mindset number 24. That your energy is limited. You only have so much energy every day. You only sleep a certain amount of energy of hours in which the rest will give you a limited amount of energy a day that's naturally why when you try to pull an all to i don't know get that assignment done or or try and get more work in you're gonna feel tired you become sluggish because time will suck away your energy away whether you waste it or not so i ask that you start valuing your time your energy especially when you have big goals in mind that you need to dedicate and audit where your energy goes now, next one, mindset number 25. Your money should not be sitting in the bank. There is a very basic principle called inflation. Every single year, whether you spend the money or not, your purchasing power becomes ever so weaker, and you may not know it, but you are on a constant fight with making enough money, paying expenses, taxes, and saving against inflation. And here's the thing, I think the only people who leave all if not most of their money in the bank are poor and middle class people who think it's safe when yet again by inflation you're losing power and money every single day and if you didn't know there's a thing called fractional reserve banking where the banks literally loan out most of your money to other people to two loans and put an interest on it and they get the profit from it and that interest is their profit even the banks don't leave your money in the bank they invest it, they put it out, and they turn it into a cash flow asset. I'm not saying save none of your money and match your expenses to your income, but what I'm trying to say is to put your money to work. Let the money have a purpose and a direction, not just staying idle and providing no active benefit to you. Mindset number 26, earn your food. I heard this saying once that everyone has the right to have access to food. And I think it is absolute bullshit. If that was true, no one would have to pay for it. It's common f sense. People would not be starving, but the reality is that food, among everything else, is earned whether by you or your parents. Let's go back a bit. Do you think cavemen had the easy access to food anytime they wanted? No, they had to go out and hunt for food. Sometimes when they couldn't catch prey for the day, they would fast, even looking at the animal chain. Each animal needs to exert some form of effort in order to get their food. But you, you can just wake up anytime you f***ing want in a house that your parents paid for and are still probably maybe paying for, and you can just walk straight to the fridge just when you wake up and grab your favorite cereal, your milk, uh, your eggs, your bacon, and, and, and you haven't earned any of it. The more we move to convenience, the more it strips us of our fundamental aspects of us being animals. Having struggle, obstacles, work, and this makes things easier, but mostly everyone lazier. So set a struggle, set an obstacle or a piece of work to meet before you have, you know, breakfast, lunch or dinner. Otherwise, don't eat. Well, then you might say, oh, I'm going to starve if I don't have breakfast or, or dinner or lunch. And to that, I recommend you to get into fasting. Your body is capable of adaption. So if you want to cut down three to two to one meal a day or eat less snacks, gain some self-restraint and slowly reduce portions of your meals and your body will naturally adapt. Over time, because I did that, I don't have to worry about eating anything until 5 p.m. when I have my first meal with dinner. I could have breakfast, lunch, coffee, snacks, and an energy drink if I wanted to. Not because I need it. I function on one meal a day because over time I adapted with less food and meals and prioritized focus on my work. Mindset number 27, everything in moderation. In a world where convenience and abundance is the most present, especially in the Western world, in first world countries, we take it all for granted and we end up cons over consuming, whether it be content, food or pleasure. I think the biggest sin first world countries commit besides idolatry and over and avoiding struggle is laziness. Have some self-control, lay off the snacks, reduce your consumption and instead create. Remove the excess, create value from yourself rather than have your energy and your value be taken away by the stupid and mindless content and memes that people watch all day. 
with really bad habits, your dopamine receptors will be fried. You lose focus in your work and become easily prone to stress. Exercising pleasure and reward in moderation with work and a productive schedule will create a healthy balance to controlling your emotions, your urges, and make sure you're not being wrecked over by any vices. Mindset number 28, think of the bigger picture. Let me ask you something. What are your goals in life? What are the goals that you have that if you achieve them would change your entire life forever? Would mean that you're fulfilled, that, that you have a purpose in your life. Then from that, look at the bigger picture and start planning, creating small action steps. It doesn't have to be big, but it just needs to work. It needs to be consistent. It needs to allow you to chip away at it every single day. And so to think of the bigger picture is to consider everything you do around you and to have a defined action plans that ensures everything you do is dedicated to the vision you have set for yourself. Mindset number 29, window of opportunity. I see windows of opportunity everywhere and I frame my mind so that I can seek them. Most of the time, you will actually be in a window of opportunity that you may not realize. Something like being young, that is a window of opportunity that I consider one of the best opportunities ever because you don't have to pay for any expenses, likely. You don't have to really work. Everything is provided to you. You have all the time in the world. Windows of opportunity are generally hard to spot and most people haven't acknowledged them. So when you do, you then move to acting on the basis of abundance and scarcity. I understand people would think this is contradictive, but I believe it's about striking a balance. I would agree that you can't have both necessarily at the same time, but you can tap into the two states of mind. Believe that opportunities are everywhere, that you just have to look out for them. But when you make your move towards one, treat it on the fact that it probably won't last, that there is a finite amount of time and a finite amount of value that you can extract from it. Then you use this mindset of scarcity to create urgency and chase it. And now the last mindset, mindset number 30, accepting not having it all and still taking action. A big thing that I see people do, which is keeping them from starting, taking action or solidifying a new perception of their future is due to their feelings of jealousy or enviousness, the act of comparison and the sin of idolatry. An example is that you think someone you see more successful than you has things and advantages that you don't have. You're quick to say they're lucky. You know, they're special that because they're in a position you're not in, it becomes your point of reference to how far you can go. You know, I used to think like that too. Until I came across undoubtedly my most influential role model to me this year, Iman. As you may know him, you might have only looked at his success. But when I peered into his life, I learned to humble myself, to always have an open mind, to be a student in life, and to never carry myself as if there were limits to what I can do or things I can't have. I was so quickly humbled and was astonished at the fact that this guy went from a single mother household with no financial support, broke, government benefits, no father role models, despite in one of the most prestigious schools in London, had horrendous academic performance, all the way to age 17 read one book a week for years, meditated, matured at such a young age, had so much structure, so much will, and slept on average less than me, and yet basically crushed me on every single aspect possible, breaking every excuse I put on myself as a reason to not try. This guy had to take control of so many responsibilities at a young age, and just observing his sheer dedication, consistency, and diligence, it taught and ingrained in me some very valuable lessons that I have more than enough to succeed, that I could have and be anything I want as long as I simply put in the work and time to get there. That the truth is, people put others on a pedestal when they are literally no different to them. They have the same flesh and bone as you. They likely had less than what you had and still had mogged the absolute f out of you at your age any day of the week in life. That no matter what position you are in your life, everyone's circumstances is different. The reality of life is that it doesn't matter what cards, what opportunities, what privileges they may have, they can still f*** it up. Truthfully, that the only difference between you and someone else that's successful is that, that they were willing to take the risk and that they pushed through with grit, patience, perseverance, diligence, all of the sorts. Non-negotiables to me is that if you even have a phone, a computer, a laptop with Wi-Fi, 
or are born in a first world country in the 21st century where in the digital economy had only been born 20 years ago which you're automatically in if you're watching this that you have no excuse to not being able to take control of your life for 99 percent of you within this digital economy with the amount of free information that's given the ability to do global scale free reach the connection of people and markets that you can either get ahead or you can fall behind and it's as simple as providing value and being paid for it and so that has been another segment of the month recap series and there will obviously be one more episode before we can look into changing some things up i'm halfway through into the summer holiday with about five weeks left and i really just want to be getting out something new so just understand this series has not been the most enjoyable part of my day Honestly, with my energy, my routine, and just kind of how my schedule has been, it hasn't been conducive to getting the best quality that I could put into this series. Either way, I hope you got something out of this. Let's get to wrapping this up with the fourth segment. And with that, I'll see you soon. Take care.